What's going on everyone? Welcome to the video. This is going to be an educational recap on Netflix and Shop and how you can take these high quality setups with confidence. I've repeatedly said in our Discord that if you are entirely dependent on blind alerts and blind callouts, you're never going to find that long term success. And it is absolutely vital that you understand and learn how to do your own analysis and how to execute on these trades. So with that said, we're first going to jump into Netflix. And before I go over the chart, I want to go over a direct screenshot from our Discord. So this was our watch list from this morning. This is the only name that I had in it. And this is a name that we've been watching since last week. So I posted the chart in our pro analysis channel, highlighting the zones and highlighting the major levels where a big move could occur. So that is the watch list that I had of Netflix. And then this is the setup that I saw. We have our supply zone from 230.75, simply the high of this candle, and then the opening price at 228.71. From this area, we can see we have a sharp move to the downside. So this shows me that we have overhead supply behind. So when price gets back into this range, we want to see sellers step into the market and push price lower, or we want to see a breakout above that top line at 230.75. So this is how I got my area of supply and then demand. We can see we have this move to the downside, followed by this consolidation candle, simply the open at 221.16 and the low at 219.67. And we can see every time price gets back within this range, buyers step in and defend price within demand. So this is the setup that I was seeing. I was noticing we were consolidating within this range. And I noticed that there wasn't a lot of liquidity above if we were to break above the top line of supply. So on Thursday, price made its way into supply. We rejected. We never got those closes above that top line. And price made moves to the downside. We can see it a little bit more clear on the 15 minute. We didn't get one single 15 minute close above that top line. And sellers were active within this area of supply. Now going into this week and going into today, these are the exact levels that I had in the watch list. The call trigger was 230.75. I wanted to see price break above that top line of supply and make a nice move higher after those previous rejections. And something that I also talk about in the Discord a lot is that these walls get weaker when they are tested. So we can see there was multiple times last week where price made its way into supply and rejected. So when price gets back into that range, we want to see that 230.75 be taken out with strong volume and for price to make its way into the further targets. Now let's take a look at the one minute and see how this moved on a smaller time frame. So if you really zoom in here, we can see that price breaks above that bottom line of supply. We use it as support and then we make our way into that 230.75. Now from this point, if you're playing a breakout, you wanna see strong volume come in and support price. And if you're longing a breakout, your stop is simply the bottom of the range or anything below that breakout level in which you enter. So if I'm entering calls here at this 230.75, my stop can simply be anything below that 230.75 or VWAP. So very tight risk for a very nice reward. And the reason why I had high conviction taking this is because we already had sellers within supply and this wall was becoming a lot weaker. So the reason why I wanted to put it in today's watch list is because we were up about three or four dollars pre-market and we were right below that 230.75. So I knew if price can bid above that 230.75 with strong volume, we can get a really nice push into that 235, 240 area. And this was a great play from today's watch list. Now I quickly wanna go over how the premiums moved as well. So we'll pull up the 240 calls for this week. And we can see from that breakout above that 230.75 level, the contracts were about $2 in this range. We have a strong move. We have a flag break going to the upside after some consolidation and we make our way into $7. So this is about a 250% move and this is a very low risk play knowing that we already met sellers within supply and we were attempting to break out above the top of the range. Now, like I've said, you wanna focus on the areas where big money can be made. Anything in the middle is just noise. You can see the big moves happened when price made its way into supply and sold off or got into demand and ripped. You don't wanna be focusing on the middle. This is just noise. You wanna be an active participant in the auction when price makes its way into your zones and into your levels. Focusing on less is more and knowing when to take your setups with confidence is key. So now let's go over shop and let's first go over what I posted in the Discord. 
So again, in our pro analysis channel last night, I posted the analysis with the detailed plan that I was looking for. So I said that I was either looking for a bounce off demand, which is simply the green box, or I was looking for a rejection off supply. So these are the two main things I was watching. Anything above supply targets the gap fill at 43.91, and anything below demand targets 37.42. Now I want to go over this bottom point as well because this is extremely important and some people get confused with this. So I said if price breaks through supply, I will look to add longs on a retest. If price breaks through demand, I will look to add shorts on a retest. If price breaks through the zone, look for them to flip. These are called zone flips, meaning on a breakdown below demand, it becomes supply, and on a breakout above supply, it becomes demand. So all this means is if price breaks out from supply and there's no selling within this range, I want to see price break out and then use this area support. That is simply all that means. It's called a zone flip. So if the supply zone is invalid and it breaks through with strong volume and it gets above that top range, I want to see price come back and use this area support. If I get long on a retest, my stop can be anything below that 42.59 or that 42.22. So that's looking at it from that perspective. And then the same thing for demand. If price comes down and really breaks down below this range, I want to see price come back up for a re-entry going short. So that's all zone flips are. If the zones become invalidated and price makes its way right through them, you want to be looking at them as support or resistance. So that's just to cover that. And then to go over the zones, this is our 15 minute supply zone. And this was a very valid one. We can see from the bottom, we have a sharp move to the upside. And then from this top that was established, we have a sharp move to the downside. So I had very high conviction on this setup. We can see the high of the range was 42.59, which was this candle right here. And then we have the opening price of this candle at 42.22. So this was our area supply. There were unfilled orders within this range from that sharp move to the downside. And when price comes back within this range, I'm looking to get short with stops for anything above that top range. So this is a high conviction setup that I took. And we can see on the five minute exactly how this looks. Price comes back within that range. We wick above. I entered on that first wick, and my stop is anything above that 42.59. My first targets are going to be VWAP and then that pivot. And then once we get below that pivot, this is the point where you leave your runners. So we get a nice breakdown below. We use it as resistance, and then we make our way into demand. So from the initial entry from supply, I entered next week's 40 puts, and they were about $1.30 to $1.35 per contract. And as we made the move lower, that's when I like to scale out. That's when I like to take premium. And then I like to leave runners for the big move going down into demand. So as we made our way down into demand, and we can see we're starting to find relief within this range, the contracts were about 225 to 230 here. And then at the very bottom, they were about 240 to 250. So this was an unbelievable return on shop and a very low risk, high reward play. So I really wanted to go over these in extreme detail so you guys can understand how to read my trade plans better and how you can really understand to take these low risk, high reward setups with confidence. And with that being said, that's gonna be all for this video. Thank you for listening and I will see you in the next one.